<laughs> video walkthrough on a chateau. We'll start in the back. Bumper caps come off. That's going to be where you store your sewer hose. It's the perfect spot for it. These do not come with the sewer hose. That's going to have to be a separate purchase. Oh, you got a receiver back here for towing, uh, like a good one on a bike rack or just a regular rack. Um, or for towing a car behind you, it does have a 800 pound uh, uh, trailer weight and then a 500 pound max tongue weight. And you do got a seven way up here for lights for whatever you're towing. Slide out's closed now, but this whole side is a slide out, and you'll see it get open as we go along. Cable inlet, if you're going somewhere that provides cable, shore cord, this is your shore cord, it comes with it, twist lock, then you can tighten this down if you wanted to. This is where we'll put your shore cord. Right over here, you got your sewer dump area. Let's make sure this kit cap gets put on for you. Um, definitely, I always definitely recommend making sure these are all the way closed, even if you see them closed, I always give them a little push before you take that cap off because you might make a little mess get your hose I want it um, you have to go underneath and through here into there and then I do black tank first let that get all the way dumped once the black tank is dumped then I do gray that'll flush flush it out so you don't have to have a black tank water in your hose you do have a, a flush here hook your hose up to there turn it on there's a little nozzle in the black tank that'll flush it out as you're draining it Outdoor shower. Let's grab the keys. You get a key. Looks like this one called a 751 key. That'll be work for the shower when you have hot and cold outside. Make sure you put it in back in all the way. Socks for your furnace, as you can see. If it gets hot, keep it clean, inspect it regularly, make sure it's not uh, full of any debris or anything like that. And then they do make screens for these. They don't recommend you run them with a the screen on, but as far as like driving down the road and for storage, it's going to keep road debris from in there. It's going to keep saw, uh, not sawdust, but d uh, dust, spider webs, insects, nests, anything for building in there that'll help with. City water connection, this is where you're going to put your hose on, and this is where you run off the city water pressure. So you won't need to use your pump. Uh, this st more storage underneath here. Nice and long, it'll be good for like chairs and whatnot. Water heater, on demand, so there isn't anything you have to do really. Besides just coming back here, making sure everything is clean, clear of any debris. The real thing to make sure it's clean is here, but there's a built-in screen for that, so that'll help. More storage. There. Access to your generator. So if you need to perform any maintenance, pop that panel off. You can get access to see the oil levels, to see the... Uh, you can start and stop it from outside. And then you can check air filters and just regular maintenance. Cab, we'll go more into that when we go inside. More storage here. More storage here. This is not storage. This is your propane. Easiest one to tell is it has no lock. It doesn't lock. So... Turn it on, go all the way to the left, turn it off, we'll turn it off now, all the way to the right. Got a little gauge here, it says three quarters. Three quarters is full because there has to be 25% room for vapor. Um, and then we, we filled onboard tanks, so if you get that empty, you can take it here to get filled. There's some campgrounds that fill them too. Vent for your fridge, just keep up in here clean. Every once in a while, take this panel off and clean back there. More storage here. This is where you're gonna fill. Let's make sure this gets put in. Yep. There we go. This is where you're gonna fill your gas up. Pretty obvious. Right below here. Quick disconnect for an outdoor grill. You got quick disconnect. Let's put this cover in. 
Here, and then there's a valve right here you open up when you're ready to use it. So if you have one of those grills that are compatible, you can hook it up through here and have an outdoor grill out here. Fresh water, this is where you're going to fill your onboard fresh tank. Just rest your hose in there. Don't jam it in there. Um, sorry about all the movement. Once it's in there, turn your hose on, fill it up. I like to monitor it on the monitoring panel rather than waiting until I hear water gush out because it might not gush out, it might end up leaking in, in, inside somehow. So reading, doing it from the monitoring panel is going to save you any maybe potential headache. And then big old storage here. Plenty of room for any unruly children. Alright, so a few more things on the outside. You do have a ladder on the back. So it is a walkable roof. I do encourage you to go up there every once in a while. What you're looking for is any gaps in the sealant, any cracks in the sealant, splits in the roof material. It's a rubber roof. Um, your rubber roof has its own warranty through the uh, manufacturer that makes the roof. The only way to keep that warranty is proof of regular maintenance, and that involves, just like I said, checking this roof itself. See anything wrong, take a picture. If you take it in to get it fixed, ask for, um, uh, ask for copies of the work receipts any information you can about it. If you do it yourself, take before and after pictures. If you buy the seal it to do it yourself, keep your receipts. Keep that in a manila folder. I recommend a manila envelope in the camper. That way if something were to happen, you can uh, have proof of regular maintenance for your roof warranty. And then all your sealant around all these fixtures is warranted through us for 90 days. So after 90 days, that's on you folks. Um, every once in a while I recommend um, doing a spot seal, going around there, doing some spot seal. If you see a gap, touch it up. Ah, tube of silicone is cheap, and you can get a caught gun for like four bucks a Harbor Freight. So, do maintenance like that once, a couple times a year, and you'll have no issue. We've got some switches here. This light switch does awning lights. The one on the right does the porch light. This one, porch light. Oh, I was wrong. LEDs under the step. Step light, turn on and off this step light here, awning. We won't even go all the way out because we can't, because there's a wall there, but I'll go to here and then I can demonstrate to you how you can adjust these to pitch, grab it here, pull it down, see how you can see how it lowers the end. It'd be a lot easier once it's all the way out. That way you can have water pitch off to the corner rather than all the way along down the side. Definitely recommend watching it when it's raining real heavily. You don't want it to, uh, the wind to rip it or bend an arm. Uh, doesn't automatically close up because of the wind. And then your awning, this won't work if your keys are at the ignition. That's just a safety feature. You have uh, some jacks, passenger side, driver side. These are just for stabilizing. I wouldn't try to use these to pick up the back of the camper to level it. Battery disconnect. If you turn it off and you were to unplug this camper, all the lights would have turned off. But if this were on and I unplugged the camper, all the lights would be on. What this does is disconnects the battery from using any anything good for storage. If you do have it plugged in when you're storing this, because they do charge when you're plugged in, make sure that's into the on position. Because if you turn it off, now you've disconnected the battery from the charging system and it won't receive that charge. And then this needs to be on like it is now for the dash radio to work and whatnot. And then over here, you're partially set up. You have to actually get the panels. But right now, this, this will just tell you what voltage you have. Um, you're partially set up for the uh, solar panels. So you just have to buy the kit and that gets put on the roof. Thermostat, super simple. You have cool, fan, off or heat. Fan is just going to run the fan on the AC. They won't actually run the AC proportion a portion of it. Excuse me. Then you have your fan modes, auto high and low. Auto is going to regulate it at whatever temperature you have it set at. Have it set at 55. It'll, once it'll hit 55, it'll shut off. And then it'll cycle on and off to help regulate that. If you just had it on a high or low, it's going to keep running even after it hits 55. And that's that could be a bad thing because if it's really hot out, real humid. Um, your AC will eventually freeze up because it won't. Uh, it's not allowing itself to cycle on and off. It'll freeze up, and you won't be able to use it again until you uh, let it thaw out. Monitoring panel, generator, hold down stop. So you see red light, then you hit up to start. We won't start it now because ideally you want to unplug. 
you want the RV unplugged, and then you can start it. Um, and then if you are running your AC and then you go, hey, I need to switch the generator, you need to shut your AC off, wait for it to come completely off, then start your generator, wait till your generator's warmed up, couple minutes, and then you can refire the AC, return on the AC. You have slide out extend, so you can extend and retract your slide out here, and then tank heaters, black and gray, and then control for your water pump. So if you're going to pull from your fresh tank, you need your water pump on. You could read propane, battery, battery is always going to read full when you're plugged in, fresh, black, and gray. Very simple. Very simple. We'll run the slide out out. And then we'll, we'll go to the cab and I'll cover the cab while we're waiting for the slide out to come out. You can look right here. That, that, that black bag is going to have all your manuals in it. Definitely recommend reading through it. Let me wipe my feet off first. Come here, your cab. This does pick up and move out of the way. So for headroom in your cab, this is also where you hook your ladder to get on up there. This up here does have a 500 pound weight limit. You can fit two or three, two, two, two adults, maybe three, three or four small children up here. Your cab, just like a standard Ford box van. It even drives like one. You just a little bit longer than one maybe. Let's put the key in. So we can demonstrate. Uh, lights. There's no automatic lights. Oop. Turn it off. When the key is in the ignition, the buzzer for the jack let's go off if the jacks are up. So one of them must be down a little bit. So let's cover that real quick. Those stabilizer jacks, if you had them down and you try to run it, you'll hear a buzzer letting you know the jacks are down so you can't take off with them down. Lights, running lights, there are no uh, daytime automatic lights, so you have to turn them on manually. Got your dimmer switch for the lights here. Cruise controls, functions here. Climate controls, very easy to use. Fan for your climate controls. Your radio is the big thing we need to cover. So you have a radio, go through here, skip through your channels. Right here, if you hit hold, whoop, saves the preset. Just like any other radio. Go back here. You have Sirius, you have to pay for that. And it might not even have the receiver in it. The radio just might be equipped for it. No. No signal. So, uh, you have to buy the special uh, satellite radio receiver that gets put in there. So this does not have Sirius radio in it. Dual mirror. This one's not even set up to be used by that. Some of them are, some of them aren't. That's just a standard function from the radio. USB, so you can hook a USB through here SD card put an SD mini SD card in there Bluetooth you can Bluetooth your phone to this and then you can have Bluetooth phone so make it take phone calls um, Bluetooth music listen to your music you can hit rear camera that way your camera rear camera is always on there's a little bit of water on it you can see look <laughs> home again then you have AVN you can ignore that because you don't have that you have different zones to listen to your radio so, zone two is the cab. Zone one is the cab. Sorry, um, it doesn't look like you have zones in this. You might have a separate radio that has zones in it. We'll, but while we're here, we can find that out. We'll quick go to radio. Save on summer essentials. There we go. Go home. Go home. So zone one is just the cab. Like where you're driving. Zone two is gonna be those speakers right over there. All right, very simple radio. Very easy to use. Go if you hit mode, it'll go back to this menu right here. Then you can select what you want. Um, you, the rear camera also goes in, turns on when you put it in reverse. Oh probably gonna smack my head. Nope. Right over here, turns into a bunk. Not a bunk, but a bed. Undo this. Push it down. Take these cushions, lay them there, create the bed. There's a, there are some USB ports there. Got your TV here. 
I think your controls foot are gonna go there. Yep. So this is for a. Uh, I don't know if it's for this radio. Or... Yep, this is the remote for that radio over there. You have another spot for cable, but really this is going to be for your booster for your antenna. If you're going to use your antenna, make sure that's on. You can see the green light. Now you can't make sure the green light's on. You got an HDMI splitter, so if you wanted to have a uh, um, input, then you have outs right here. So if you have your own DVD player, you can set it in here, put it to one of the inputs for the splitter, and then you can change to which TV it's going to. Oh, this turns into a bed as well. Let's actually move this up out of the way. Grab up underneath, lift up, pull out. Creates a bed. Coming along here. Fridge is super simple. On or off. Auto. For gas, definitely recommend just using auto. Auto is going to default to 110. If that's what it senses, that's what it's going to use. If you were going to lose power or someone were to trip over the short cord, it'll automatically switch to running off of propane for you. Um, it will run off the generator too if you have the generator running. It'll run 110 off the generator. Um, unlike your normal fridge, these two take about 8 to 10 hours to get the operating tech. Keep that in mind. Microwave works just like your microwave at home, only works when you're plugged in or running off your generator. I'm looking for, there should be. A remote for your TV over there. I want to make sure you guys have the remote for the TV. Give me one second. I was still looking for it. You have some storage in there too. Well, as we move along with our walkthrough, I can show you the, uh, the video. Not the video, but I'll, I'll we can find out grates and whatnot to use for the convection portion of your microwave. Yes, this is a convection oven. Cooktop, super simple. Turn this. Push it in. Same with the other one. The gas is off, so it's going to bleed all the gas out of the lines. But yep, yeah, you just turn it to the spark. Push and hold, it lights it. And then you do have a uh, induction cooker right there, so you just tap it on, change your temperatures. Remember, these only ever get hot when you have an actual pain on them. Lights, GFCI protected, all your GFCIs are on the same circuit. And then you have USB ports there too. Outlets, I didn't mean to say lights. More switches here, one on the left does these lights, one on the right does those ones. Plenty of closet space in here, and then, yep, this is what I was looking forward to. This little, like, curtain, that, there's Velcro points up here. See? Here, and there, and they stretch all the way across. That is, like, a privacy curtain, so you can cover up this cab area, so no one can peek in on you. I want to make sure I find those remotes for you. Here it is, right there. Behind this carpet, cup, cabinet, top one. Bathroom, there's a magnet on the door. You can't have it set to hold open. A light switch here, one on the right, one on the left. It's for your fan up there. Open it up by opening this here. Definitely recommend running that when you take a hot shower. Keep some moisture off the walls. Water heater here, you have on or off. That's it, and then you can change your temperature. The nice thing about these is there's no bypass you have to worry about. Um, there's one installed on it, but you don't have to take this in and out of bypass when you winterize it. Just make sure when you run any freeze through it that you don't turn your water heater on. This works from pressure, water pressure, so it's not on until you tell it to turn on. So open this. If you, this, we had water hooked up to this, you would open this up. You see water come out, and you see a little flame, a little fan show up. That's telling you it's turning on. That's what's called an on-demand water heater. It only turns on when you need it. Toilet, super simple, flush with the pedal. As long as you're pushing, it's gonna keep flushing. Nice thing is it's porcelain. Shower, make sure you latch this like this when you travel so these doors aren't swinging everywhere. Very easy, hot and cold. Little uh, sunlight, but 
Those are also help if you're taller. You can actually stand up in there. Well, that's it for in the bathroom. Oh, one last thing. This is the outlet you we set any of the GFC guys that would a trip. You can reset it off of this one. Bedroom. That's your light right here. You got an outlet, USB ports, 12 volt outlet right here, plenty of spot to charge. Another outlet on the other side over there. Nice little like, I don't know, vanity with lights underneath it here. Power there. Storage up there. Plenty of storage in here. Clothes rack and whatnot. Both lights above the bud. Click them to turn them on to the light. A vent here, no fan, but just a vent. And then your bed does lift up. There is a storage, some storage underneath here. However, I was showing you that fresh tank. You want to drain your fresh tank after every trip. And the only way to drain it is to lift up your bed. There's two number two square screws there. So get a every almost every fastener on this camper is a number two square bit. So I'd get yourself one of those. For stuff like this, unscrew that one, unscrew the other one over there, lift up this panel, and there is a big red, there should be a big red valve in there. That's how you drain your fresh tank. You don't want it sitting with half full of water while stored because it'll start to get stagnant. And then you do have curtain, well, curtains, just like blinds, slide, unclip it, slide it. Hooks right into, right into here. And then you got some privacy in here. And then make sure when you travel, again, just like everything else, you have it clipped for storage. All right, just a few more things. Got a car, uh, smoke alarm right here. Standard nine volt batteries when they start giving you those low volts of chirps, replace it. Fire extinguisher right there. You should have, not in here, but somewhere around here. Nope. Break the box, you have all your breakers for your 110 volt appliances, all your fuses for your 12 volt. I recommend getting a box of assorted fuses just in case, so you have something to replace it with. And then, there's one other safety appliance I wanted, I wanted to show you. Oh, it's right back there. You can see it. It's got a green light on it. That's a carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm. That's hardwired to the 12 volt system, so there's no batteries you have to worry about changing. If the, if the battery up underneath that step were to start dying, um, it'll start getting you know, low voltage chirps. Just plug this camper in to charge it. And it also does charge when you drive down the road. Alrighty then. Well, that concludes your virtual tour or video walkthrough of your uh, Thor Chateau. I hope you guys uh, found the video informative. I hope you guys really enjoy using this camper. I like it a lot, so you guys should too. Um, and goodbye.